I've had an opportunity to look at your testimony, lots of stuff, and hear about numerous task forces, crimes being committed against children, including even infants and to toddlers, MS-13 gang members coming across the open southern border, the poisoning and killing of the American people with fentanyl, the, the sex trafficking, the human trafficking. It, it's quite clear, it is clear that you guys are dealing with some of the sickest bastards in our society. I have an article here from CNN in January 2022 calling the January 6th investigation the biggest investigation in FBI history. And what shocks me about this, quite honestly, is that you don't mention January 6th, again, the biggest investigation, not one time in your 14-page testimony. You don't mention it one time. And that makes me ask myself the question, what the hell are you hiding? Sir, you mentioned 38,000 agents and support personnel in your agency. How many FBI agents and support personnel have you assigned to the January 6th investigation? I don't know that I know the number. I know we have a lot of people working okay, on it in multiple lots then. Fair enough, lots. Yeah. Knowing that you are dealing with some of the sickest people in our society with investigations related to child sex trafficking, have you reassigned any of these agents or personnel to investigate January 6th? Yes or no? I, I don't believe we have reassigned people away from uh, child exploitation okay, to January I, 6th. No, but no, but let me just say this, Director. I, I find that answer knowledge. disturbing because last month, Steve Friend, he testified before the Weaponization Committee. Mr. Friend was a domestic terrorism investigator for you, and he was told by one of his superiors that January 6th was, I quote, a higher priority than pursuing child pornography cases, end quote. And for those of you watching in America, understand today's FBI is more concerned about searching for and arresting grandma and grandpa for entering the Capitol building that day than pursuing the sick individuals in our society who prey on our children. And Mr. Ray, your priorities are flawed. But let's rehash what we know so far. All right, it's the largest investigation in FBI history, and you don't mention it in your testimony. Agents have been reassigned from child exploitation cases and so on. So now let's get into the money, Mr. Ray. How much taxpayer money has been spent on January 6th? I don't know that I have the figure. Oh, you don't have it in my okay, head, fine. but. Mr. Ray, I got an article here, uh, December 22, uh, 2022, two years after the events of January 6th, and it says the Justice Department has requested another $34 million from Congress. And uh, number one, you shouldn't get another dime. The FBI shouldn't get another dime for this political witch hunt against the greatest president in my lifetime, Donald J. Trump. I, I want to turn my attention now to this fella, this character, Mr. Ray Epps. We've all heard of him. We've heard of Mr. Ray Epps. He was number 16 on your FBI Most Wanted list. He was encouraging people the night prior and the day of to go into the Capitol. And Mr. Ray Epps can be seen at the first breach of Capitol grounds at approximately 12.50 p.m. Play the clip, please. We need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. What? All right, no, Dave, okay, but one more thing. Yeah, so can we go up there? No? When we go in. Are we going to get arrested if we go up here. there? Yeah. You don't need to get shot. Breaching the line, going in at the first breach into the Capitol, into the Capitol grounds, a restricted area. Mr. Ray, you have arrested hundreds of people related to January 6th. And there have been people arrested for breaching Capitol grounds. Cooey Griffin is an example. Rachel Genko is an example. And then we go to Mr. Brandon Strecka. Brandon was arrested for disorderly and disruptive conduct which included yelling, I quote, go, 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 as rioters tried to empty the Capitol. These three never went into the Capitol. They never assaulted anyone. So let's be honest with each other. 
There is very little difference between the actions of Ray Epps and Brandon Stricka that day, but yet Stricka was arrested and Epps wasn't. Epps also testified to the January 6th committee. He was back at his hotel when video evidence showed that he wasn't. He lied. He was on the Capitol grounds just as Brandon Strecker was. Epps even texted his nephew at 2.12 p.m. and said, I quote, I was in the front with a few others. It was on the video. I also orchestrated it. Now look into the camera, sir, when you answer my next question. Are you going to arrest Mr. Epps, yes or no? I'm not going to engage here in a discussion about individual people who are okay, or are not going to be prosecuted. Can I get a commitment? You just watch the video. I'm an old law dog. I understand a little bit about probable cause. He did very little. There was very little difference what he did and Mr. Strecka. You can see him. He's encouraging. I almost think he's inciting a riot. He's encouraging people the night prior to go into the Capitol, the day of, go into the Capitol. And he was at the first breach and he breached the restricted area. Everybody, a lot of people getting arrested for not going into the Capitol, but they're in the restricted area. But yet, Ray Epps, who many people feel, fed, 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 right? And there's a lot of cloud over this. So I, I, my point is this. You arrested a lot of folks for unlawful activity. You right. just saw the video. And I will tell you, order, Mr. Ray, Mr. Uh, if you don't yeah. arrest Mr. Epps, the there's a reason behind it. I believe you know order, what it order. is. And it appears to me you are protecting this guy. I strongly recommend you get your house back in order. With that, I yield back. Mr. Chairman, if I might briefly. Gentlemen, we respond, and we got a couple point of orders. Uh, it is not. Your name is consent. Excuse me. Go ahead. It, it has never been appropriate for an FBI director in congressional testimony to be weighing in on who is or isn't going to be arrested and what, who is or isn't going to get charged, which is a prosecutor's decision. If you are suggesting that the violence that at, Cap at the Capitol on January 6th was part of some operation orchestrated by FBI sources or FBI agents, the answer is no, it was not. And to suggest otherwise is a disservice to our hardworking, dedicated law enforcement profession. Can I respond to that now that uh, the, the point is, he was number 16 on your list. Yeah, the, the, he was 16 on your list. You never arrested the him. The gentleman but hundreds of Americans the were arrested. Has Shame on you. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida for unanimous. Um, you are being attacked and vilified by some of the members of this committee and others outside this committee because the Justice Department and the FBI has had the audacity to investigate serious allegations of criminal conduct by a former president. Uh, and I just want a chance to recap uh, how we got to where we are. Uh, during the last administration and for four years, the Justice Department took the position, uh, not unprecedented for the department, uh, that a former president could not be, a current president could not be indicted. Now, I think that's a flawed matter as a constitutional principle, but nonetheless, that was the view of the Office of Legal Counsel and the Justice Department during the Trump years, that the President of the United States could not be indicted. My Republican colleagues seem to believe that a former president similarly cannot be indicted. Uh, that would effectively make a president above the law, beyond the reach of the law. Uh, and in my view, there would probably be only one thing the founders would find more politically uh, precarious and dangerous to our Constitution than the indictment of a president or former president, and that is the failure to indict a president or former president when they have engaged in criminal conduct. Um, the Justice Department, uh, I believe, as uh, Representative Lofgren, uh, my fellow member of the January 6th Committee, asserted, took a very long time to begin the investigation of Donald Trump and his involvement in January 6th. I believe it began with urgency when it came to the foot soldiers who broke into the Capitol and assaulted police officers that day. But at least what I can tell from the public record, the activities of the president himself, some of which were a matter of very much a public record, uh, such as his tape-recorded conversation with the Secretary of State in Georgia in which he badgered the secretary to, quote, find 11,780 votes that don't exist. Uh, while that was the subject of investigation by the local district attorney in Fulton County, did not appear to be the subject of investigation for more than a year by the Justice Department. Uh, to me, that is inexplicable. Uh, this was never a kind, the kind of case in which you could roll up the foot soldiers on the higher ups because there were multiple lines of effort in this plot to overturn the election. 
I do think that the appointment of the special counsel has accelerated the investigation of the former president's misconduct, and I think that is a positive step for the department and for the country so we can get resolution to this. But likewise, with Mar-a-Lago, notwithstanding the protests of my colleagues, there were repeated, repeated requests by the archives to get those documents back uh, from the former president. Uh, and then when those were unsuccessful, there was a grand jury subpoena that was administered. And when that was unsuccessful, and only when that was unsuccessful, and there was evidence that the former president was still withholding highly classified materials, did the FBI go to the step of a search warrant? That was more than a year and a half after those initial requests. This was anything but a rush to judgment in the Mar-a-Lago case. Uh, so I believe the department, if anything, has, has uh, exercised enormous caution, I would say too much caution, in the January 6th commission, uh, committee as work and oversight uh, to proceed uh, against a former president when there are serious and credible allegations of criminal conduct. Um, but I want to thank you for your stewardship during this incredibly difficult time. I don't think there's been a more difficult time for an FBI director. Uh, and notwithstanding the concerns I have expressed, none of them go to your integrity uh, or your commitment to the country, and I want to thank you for that. Let me ask you about a different topic, um, although related to January 6th as well. But let me talk, ask you broadly about domestic violent extremism. I offered an amendment in this committee voted down by the Republicans that we should oversee the increasingly dire threat of domestic violent extremism. Um, one of your recent reports underscored the, the rise of this prevalent threat, and I'd ask you if you would address it today. So the rise of domestic violent extremism uh, is something that uh, I and we have been uh, identifying for quite some time. It goes back well before January 6th. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but the Joint Terrorism Task Forces that we hear about so often at the FBI were largely created in response to domestic terrorism, not foreign terrorism. Uh, but in my first few years uh, as director, we were identifying this issue more and more, and that's why we elevated in the summer of 2019 uh, racially motivated violent extremism to a national threat priority level. Uh, and we saw, I think, about a 40% increase uh, in the number of domestic violent extremism investigations uh, all before anything to do with January 6th. Obviously, since then, it has, has continued. But domestic violent extremism uh, cuts across the spectrum from the racially motivated violent extremism, militia violent extremism, anarchist violent extremism, uh, environmental violent extremism, uh, and of course, recently, uh, we've had a lot of uh, violent extremism uh, attacks against uh, pro-life facilities, and we're investigating those. So it, it really covers a wide spectrum, and what they all have in common is three things, uh, violence or threats of violence, motivated by some ideology, and it varies, uh, in violation of federal criminal law, and that's the domestic violent extremism violent extremism that I'm talking about when I've identified this phenomenon. Mr. Chairman, could I request unanimous consent to enter into the record uh, two letters, uh, both from David Weiss, the Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in Delaware, uh, rebutting allegations concerning, impar concern partiality, concerning partiality in the investigation of the Hunter Biden case? Uh, I would object. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Director. Without objection. Director, what's the difference between a traditional